Hi everyone, it's Mrs McInnes here. Welcome to our first at-home lesson of our new topic, which is distance, speed and time. So before we go on and look at calculating these three variables, we're going to be spending a few periods um, just revising some of our skills that we already have on working with time, uh, things like 12 and 24 hour time, calculating time intervals and also I'm going to be showing you how to do something called decimal time um, because these are all skills that we're going to need to use when we're actually calculating uh, speed, distance and time with the associated formulas. So to begin with for this morning what I'm asking you to do as your starter is to write down the times shown on these six uh, clock faces here in both 12 and 24 hour time. So what I would like to do is just in your jotter or on a piece of paper, whatever you have handy, if you could write down the times uh, of these six clocks in 12 and 24 hour time. So go ahead and pause the video, uh, fill those in and when you're ready you can restart the video and I will fill them in with you so you can check your answers. So if you go ahead and pause the video now, Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in our times and you can check along with me to see how you've done. So for question A there, we have a time of five o'clock and it just says at the left hand side there that that clock is in AM. So that would be five o'clock in the morning. So if we were writing that in 12 hour time, we would simply write that as five AM. In 24 hour time, however, we would write that as 0500 for five in the morning, okay? For question B, we have a time there of five minutes past three. So in 12 hour time, this uh, as well, just at the left hand side there says PM. So we would write that as 305, because it's five minutes past, and then PM, so 305 PM. Now in 24 hour time, anything that is after 12 o'clock lunchtime, we add 12 hours to the hours to change it to 24 hour time. So we would actually add 12 onto the three, which would give us a time of 50. 15.05, okay? For question C, we have a time there of quarter to 10 and that clock there is in AM, so that's quarter to 10 in the morning. So we would write that as 9.45 and that clock there is AM, so we would add AM to that as well. In 24 hour time, we would write that as 0.945, okay? For D, we have a time there of 25 minutes to 3. So as in a 12 hour time, we would write that as 2.35. Okay, if you count your minutes round from 12, it's 35 minutes past 2. And that time there is in PM, so we would add our PM to the end. And in 24 hour time, we again, we're going to add on 12 hours to our number of hours here, which is two. So that's gonna turn it into 14.35. For question E, we have a time there of 10 to two, and that's AM, so that would be very early in the morning. That's 10 to two uh, in the morning. So we would write that as 1.50, okay, 10 minutes to two, and that would be AM at the end of that one. And then in our 24 hour time, we would write that as 0150. And the last one here for F, we have a time of 10.30 and that's PM. So that's quite a simple one to do. That would be 10.30 PM. And in 24 hour clock, we're gonna add on 12 hours to our number of hours, which is 10 there. So that's gonna become 22.30. Okay, so hopefully we've managed to do that quite well. If that's something that you think you need to revise, then please make sure that you let me know if you need anything to help you do that. Um, if we're feeling confident enough with that, we can now move on to today's 
learning intentions. So what we're going to be looking at in today's lesson is calculating a time interval. So what I mean by that is how long in hours and minutes between two given times. Um, this will be a skill that you will need when we get further on in the topic and uh, we start looking at questions where we're looking at calculating a distance or a speed uh, and we need the time element to do the calculation, uh, but perhaps you're only told the start and end times. Okay, so our success criteria here are we need to be able to convert between 12 and 24 hour time. That will just depend on how the question is worded for you. So the starter was hopefully a little revision of that for you. Um, we need to know that 60 minutes is one hour. That will be important um, when you're writing your final answers uh, for some of the questions today um, that you remember that 60 minutes is one hour. And the last thing we're going to be needing to do is using what I'm going to call a timeline to calculate a time interval. Uh, and I'll demonstrate that for you in your examples. OK, so here we are going to do our first example where I'm asking you to calculate the length of time between 8.30 a.m. and 11.25 a.m. So I'm going to encourage you guys to use a timeline to do these types of questions. Some of you will be feeling confident and might be able to just work that out in your head, uh, maybe picturing the clock face and just counting on from that start time of 8.30. If you can do it in your head, that's absolutely fine. You can just write your answers down. But sometimes a visual um, kind of illustration of this is helpful. So if you feel like the timeline method is going to be helpful, then absolutely I would encourage you to use that. So if we are going to start at 8.30 a.m., what I would say to do first is think about what the next whole hour would be. So the next closest just full hour. So 8.30, I'm going to go for looking at how much time we have up to 9 a.m., okay? So 8.30 up to 9 a.m. So hopefully you should be able to work that out in your head. From half eight till nine, that's 30 minutes, okay? So I'm just gonna write that underneath there, 30 minutes. We then are looking at what is the hours of my end time. So it's 11.25, so if I just look at 11 a.m., Okay, so from 9 a.m. up to 11 a.m., how many hours is that? 9, 10, 11, that's two hours. Okay, and then my finish time was 11.25, so that's where we need to finish. So 11.25 a.m., so from 11 to 11.25, that's 25 minutes. Okay, so by breaking this problem down into sections, little chunks, it is maybe a little bit easier for some of you to actually look at the total time. So if we add all this together, okay, so you're going to add up your 30 minutes, your two hours, and you're 25 minutes. So in total, that is a time of two hours, and your 30 minutes plus your 25 minutes is 55 minutes. Okay, so that would be your total time. So that's the kind of thing I would like you to uh, picture when you're doing these questions, okay? So if we try another example now, so if I scroll this down, so example two, we have here, calculate the t length of time between 2.25 p.m. and 6.40 p.m. So again, I'm going to use the same timeline method. Now, again, if you can just do this in your head, you can just write the time down. If you perhaps do this uh, timeline in a different way, way that I'm doing it, that's absolutely fine as well. Uh, my illustration is just to give you an example of how you might want to think about it. But if you can work the time out in another way, that's absolutely fine. So we're starting at 2.25 p.m. So like I did in the previous example, if we just look at the next whole hour, so 2.25, the next whole hour would be 3 p.m. Okay, so from 2.25, to 3 p.m. How long is that in minutes? Well, that would be 35 minutes, okay? We're at 3 p.m. and the finish time in this question is 6.40. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up to 6 p.m. So from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. that is obviously three hours. 
and then I'm going to go from 6 p.m. to my correct finish time, which is 6.40 p.m. So that's a nice easy one from 6 to 6.40. That's obviously 40 minutes. So again, the same as the last question, we're going to add all these pieces of time together. So 35 minutes, 3 hours and the 40 minutes. So all together, you've got your 3 hours... And your 35 minutes plus your 40 minutes, that would be 75 minutes. Now, we would never say 75 minutes when we're giving a total of time. What you need to remember there is that 60 minutes makes up one hour. So that 75 minutes would be one full hour, because that's your 60 minutes, and then 15 minutes left over okay so you need to think about taking out 60 minutes as a whole hour if your total is anything higher than 60 so your actual total time here would be four hours and then the 15 minutes that's left over okay so just try and bear that in mind and um, check your final answers if anything is above 60 that you're taking out those full hours all right. The last example I would like to do is just a slightly different kind of uh, worded version of these questions. And there are some questions like this in the worksheet that I'm going to give you to do today. So I wanted to do kind of one of each just to illustrate these to you as well. So for this question here, we have uh, what time is 26 minutes after 1.15 p.m.? Again, like I've said already, if you can just do that in your head, you can just write the answer down. But if you want to use a timeline method to illustrate it, go for that. Whatever works best in your mind, that's absolutely fine. So 26 minutes after 1.15pm. So if I was to start with 1.15pm, what I could do is I could take my 26 minutes and obviously split that down into smaller pieces. So what I could do perhaps to start would be maybe to add on the 20 minutes, okay? So plus 20 minutes on to 115. So if you add on 20 minutes to 115, you're obviously going to get 1.35 p.m. Now I was adding on 26 minutes, not 20, so I've still got another six minutes to add. So if you add on your six minutes, to 135, you're just adding on 6 to that 35, so you'll end up with 141 p.m. Okay, you could do that in the other order as well. You could add the 6 minutes on first, then the 20. You could add on 10 minutes, then another 10 minutes, then the 6 minutes. However you want to do it is fine, okay? It's very flexible, this method. So for the last example here, we have what time is 34 minutes before 12.47? So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start at this end this time, 12.47pm. And I'm going to be going back the way because it's a time before. So here you can split your 34 minutes up into smaller pieces. Perhaps maybe 30 minutes and 4 minutes. You could also do maybe 10, 10, 10 and 4. Whatever you think is going to be easiest for you to manage. So I'm going to go for doing 30 minutes and the 4 minutes. So 30 minutes before 12.47, you're just going to be taking that 30 away from your 47. So that's going to leave you at 12.17 p.m. And then I've got another four minutes to go back. So minus four minutes. So four minutes off of that 17 is going to leave you at 12.13 p.m. Okay. So in both cases, that would be my final answer for each. All right. So these are the types of questions I would like you guys to try this morning. So here is the questions I've chosen for you. Now I know that looks like a lot, but these questions are very small and very quick, okay? And that is a nice mixture of all the types of examples that I have done. Your questions today are all in 12 hour time only, just to get you started on um, the actual time interval calculations. Tomorrow we will look at some 12 hour time questions as well okay so if you can go ahead and have a go at these questions the pdf and this video are both posted in the same place under uh, the assignment instructions so they are there for you to do if you have your jotter handy you can use that if you don't some blank paper or some um maybe a spare notepad or something would be absolutely 
sign, okay? I will be on live on the Teams page during our class time. So if you would like to come on and ask any questions, if you want me to check anything over, that's absolutely fine. I will post uh, the answers for these questions from the worksheet as well for you so you can check your work yourselves. Um, if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me on the Teams page or if you want to email me, that's fine as well. All right, good luck and have fun with these questions and I will be online to offer any help that you need. All right, thanks guys, bye.